All right, welcome back to the show. And like we said earlier, we are joined in the studio by Arthur Ungube. But let me just give a brief recap of what the Miss Universe Nigeria pageant is all about. And it's poised to make history with a bold new development. And in an unprecedented move, the organization has invited the ex Miss Universe South Africa Chidima to participate in this year's competition. Now, this has not only piqued the interest of the global pageantry community, but has also caused conversations about the impact of the event. Now, to delve deeper into the significant decision and the reason behind this, uh, of course, we're joined by Arthur Gube, who is the brand manager of the Silverbird Group, the parent company behind Miss Universe Nigeria, which is operating under the renowned Most Beautiful Girl in Nigeria. So, Arthur, good to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Good morning. It feels I know great you. to be home again. I know you have not slept <laughs> in the past how many days? Lord have mercy. I mean, uh, the controversy surrounding Chidima's uh, withdrawal from the Miss South Africa beauty pageant all the attention the company has been getting. We've been seeing a mixed reaction of people online. This is a great opportunity to show Chidima and other Nigerians who are in diaspora that, if, look, if they don't love you outside, we're going to love you inside. Mm. And one of the most important things about this exercise is it's brought Nigerians together. For one of the few moments in 2024, whether you are Alsa, Igbo, Yoruba, rich, poor, beggar, mm. we have put all of that aside and we focused on safeguarding the rights of a Nigerian who is outside. Some people have said, she's never been in Nigeria before. She doesn't know anything about Nigeria. Guess what? It doesn't matter to us. Because once you're green, white, green, you could be in America, you could be in Spain, Nigeria will always be your home. Nice. I like how you... Sorry. Oh, oh, all right. All right. So um, speaking of, you know, Nigeria is always going to be your home. Yeah. I know there are a lot of people that might be facing similar things, maybe yeah. on a smaller scale, smaller uh -huh. pageant. Uh -huh. um, I just want to find out what inspired the organization to actually take that leap of faith to say, okay, yes, this is the time, and why now? So I'm going to tell you something, right? When we saw the story online, we had been following it for quite a while. We had noticed it, and we said, look, this might not be more than just a few people who are just destroyed. And maybe once again, this myth that Nigerians, you know, they know how to take everything from other people mm. would pop up. And over time, it now began to escalate. Now, when you are backed in a corner in another man's land and everywhere you turn, there just seems to be a brick wall. Nobody is in your corner. We are a beauty pageant as well. We are not just a beauty pageant who does it for the cosmetics. We do this pageant to show people the resilience of the Nigerian woman. And we want to give every single Nigerian woman an opportunity to be the best she can be on an international mm -hmm. platform. This young lady in South Africa was about to be denied that opportunity. Now, if, and not, if something like that had allowed, been allowed to happen without anybody stepping in, yeah. think about the, 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 the ripple effect it could have on her psyche. She may never be able to step outside again. She might put the entire world of pageantry to rest. She might have a different disposition towards so pageantry. Okay. And we're not saying it's because of it's an international incident. We heard about it. Everyone in the world most likely has heard about it. But who has done something about it? Well, well, speaking of doing something about it, what impact is our inclusion in this competition? How is it going to affect the dynamics of the Miss Universe Nigeria 2024? Indeed. So I'll tell you something, and I'm not going to act like it's not going to have an impact. It has had an impact. It's got Nigerians talking about pageants once again, which is a good thing because many a time we forget about the institutional events that help shape mm. our women. Mm. There are so many contents on TV today that are all sleazy. No disrespect to the creators, but it's sleazy. It's never been able to put women in a light where they will get respect and they will get, you know, uh, the type of uh, uh, positive reactions that they should get. The Miss Universe Nigeria, MBGN as a pageant brand, Miss Universe Nigeria, Miss World Nigeria, Miss Supranational Nigeria, are events that we've put together to help bring out the very best of Nigerian women through pageantry. The theme for this year is the era of the digital woman. Digitalization of the world's media today has changed the way we interact with the media. And we want people to understand this thing. That's why it's our theme for this year. How has digitalization helped women to become, you know, evolved mm -hmm. in their individual mm -hmm. spaces? That's how we are thinking forward. Nice. Some other events have not thought in that direction. What they do is, oh, they want to put, you know, the, they, they put the physical over what is available internally. And we have people who are, I'm sorry to say, a bit shallow. We want the very best for the Nigerian man. I feel like this is one of those ways that the, the very best values of the Nigerian man can be emphasized, and that's what we're doing. Right. Speaking of impact and significance, obviously we need to remember that it's still a competition. Yes, it is. And there are other people that have actually, you know, they've gone through the traditional audition. 
they've gone through the normal prospect blood sweat mm -hmm. and tears disappointment and finally getting picked as one of the delegates for yeah. this year's competition so now how are those people that went through all of that how are they responding to this new person that has been you know you reached out to her and you've brought her directly into the thick of everything this is very interesting as well uh for the Miss South Africa beauty pageant. Chidima was already a delegate finalist, so she was amongst yeah. the girls who would actually compete as well, not somebody who had just bought a form and was waiting to be selected. She was already picked, so that means she had already passed a certain criteria. Now, at the Miss Universe pageant level, all national directors have to come under a specific type of scrutiny to, to get the final delegates that would compete. And dare I say, the Miss South Africa pageant also ranks a par with, ranks, ranks on level with what we do at the Miss Nigeria mm -hmm. Beauty pageant. And I believe that their status quo would be the same as our status quo. So yes, that ticks a box. She was already selected. Bring it back here locally. Uh, we have a series of processions that everyone must pass through before you get to that final stage as well. It's also very interesting to note that at the delegates level, the girls themselves, and I must say this is one of the things that broke our hearts. The girls at the Miss Nigeria Beauty Pageant level were also putting together a letter to the management of the Miss Nigeria Beauty Pageant, Miss Universe Nigeria Beauty Pageant community. Say, look, this girl is being disenfranchised in another country. Mm -hmm. We want this girl to come and participate in this pageant. And that just aligned with our goals. And you see, we hadn't even spoken to these girls, but they had already come together in the outcome, it said, look, this is what we want you guys to do. If you can do this, this will not only bring attention to the Nigeria pageant, but it will bring attention to some atrocities that are happening in different parts of the world. But I'm looking at how it can also still remain balanced. How can the competition be balanced? You know, because this is a very unique direct invitation. Yeah. We start with the girls that have been in, you know, already going to camp and all of that. So how will the competition remain fair and balanced, given this circumstance? Well, I'm not going to lie to you. Balancing anything is an act. And so it's one of the things we've, able, we've been able to accomplish in the last 30-something years. We've always had a neutral set of, of judges who participate at different stages of the pageant competition. Uh, the judges who are responsible for picking the final 37 or 24 girls are different from the judges who participate in the pre-judging in camp. And they are also different from the judges who finally participate at the main event. So all the judges, none of them work for Silverberg. They're not affiliated with us through uh, uh, employment or any way or shape or form. So they are all different judges who come together, but they are, they are, they are instituted on the criteria that is required for selecting yes. any individual who is going to make it from point A to point B. We also, I beg your pardon, we also have an open-based voting system where you, the everyday Nigerian people, get the opportunity to pick who would make it into the final three or the final 15. Oh my God, but I also wanted to ask the response, of course, from the, how's it been for the Nigerian and the South African communities? What's it been like? Well, South Africans are always going to do what South Africans right. are. Yes. I, know, right? I mean, these are the people that killed Lucky Dube, so what do we want to expect from them? But I'll tell you something, some of them are also happy that Chidima has not been abandoned. They say, good for you, mm. your people are there to back you up. The Nigerian, we've received calls from government I individuals wow. giving us a pat on the back saying a job well done. We've received calls wow. from our contemporaries as well telling us this is amazing. We've been receiving offers from different people that just want to be part of a process that, 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 you know, that puts people and gives them the opportunity to fulfill their dreams. Mm. All right. Nice. Now, so Chidema coming into Nigeria, what are the plans Miss Universe Nigeria has for her in terms of hosting and um, what special um, preparations are we putting together? So there is no golden calf in this event. Oh. Nobody is more special than the other. All 24 girls, and Chidima has not responded to whether or not, I'm not even allowed to speak on that right now because they're waiting for a response from her. She's yet to respond. But when she does respond, whether she does decide to come to this pattern or not, we have done a very important thing, which is not abandon our brother. You know what I'm saying? Which is most important. Our, our brother or sister, we will not abandon he or she, regardless of the situation they might be in. Mm. But if she does decide to come, there's not going to be a special red carpet rollout. Every girl is going to get the equal treatment. So if the girls in Nigeria are going to be drinking cold Akamu and uh, cold Akara, Chidma is going to drink cold Akamu and it's cold Akara. If they're going to track on that and say, Maza, Maza, come off for road, <laughs> Chidima will be the one singing, yo, yo, you know the passenger. Nice so there one. is no special treatment 
for anybody. Let me just say that. <laughs> I like how, I like how you said that, but in terms of uh, what does this collaboration signify in terms of cross country participation? Because we don't really see things like this in major beauty pageants. This yeah. is one of a kind. This is the first, and I'm happy that Silverbirds Miss Universe Nigeria is a pioneer in this regard. I always say it honor personalities and broadcasters are like footballers. Why not, you know, uh, pageant delegates as well? It's not the first time we've had delegates who have do who may have dual citizenship. Mm. Oluchi, who won a couple years back, had an American citizenship and a Nigerian citizenship. Arara Mitosin, who won as well, had an American citizenship and a Nigerian citizenship. And they may have competed in pageants in America, but were unable to make the cut. They had to come back home mm. to, to compete to make the cut as well. And so we encourage Nigerians abroad, at home, don't worry. If the people outside don't accept you, come, come home. back home too as come well. Come home. That's the way you chase for <laughs> Sokoto. If you dare your Sokoto. Nice. Nice. It's 50 50. I like that. I like that. All I can say now is what should we be expecting from you guys in the coming days? Miss Universe Nigeria, what should the public be expecting from Miss Universe Nigeria in terms of more information, more announcements, and you know, more of a hands on on this amazing. Um, let, me, let me just first and foremost say the strides we've made would not have been made possible without some of our partners and our sponsors who have already indicated their support before this whole Chidima thing happened and before we even got to this stage. So first and foremost, big thank you to Lush, uh, big thank you to Nutrify. Uh, these are the guys who threw their hat in the ring with us. They've always been our brand partners. They always wanted us to bring out the best in the Nigerian women. So you're going to be getting some really amazing experiences from Lush and Nutrify. Uh, I'll also like to say a big shout out to the Echo Hotel. They've been our partners since, since this pageant even began, since mm. the world of pageantry began. They've been one of our longest term partners. We also want to thank you to the Lagos State Government for always being a supporter of progress, the Nigerian government as well. Uh, we've got a major press conference tomorrow. Some of the questions that we are unable to entertain on this platform. We've got major news outlets, uh, print outlets all coming in tomorrow. They want to know what's going on with the pageant. And then I think we might finally be able to answer those questions that I have to stay away from here. Okay. We can have those questions answered tomorrow. We've got content on digital media. The voting videos are doing fantastic. We've got all an, an all-inclusive delegate set of women. And I'm sure anybody who wants information, go to www.missuniversenandria.org. Go to the social media handles. Turn on the notification so you get access to all the information that we will be sharing. Mm, I know a lot of people have questions, especially when I saw on social media. Yeah. That's just a bit off the cuff. You know, talking about why were the girls some being put in different states that don't belong to them, but then... I mean, I can answer that yeah. one. So the shortcut answer to that is when you have more girls from a particular region by the form, the law of average dictates you have more of them in the competition. But then again, a more inclusive uh, 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 response would be we are all one Nigeria, Perfect. right? Doesn't matter where you're from or where he's from. As long as when you check the blood is green, white, green, mm -hmm. you could represent Sokoto, you could represent Zamfara, and your first name could be Enewarek Pomeo Genekewe Turangba. You will be representing Sokoto <laughs> because you have been through the trials and tribulations of Nigeria. You know mm -hmm. the passion points. Nothing stops any Nigerian girl from representing any Nigerian state. Will it be great to have an Oshobo girl represent Oshobo? Oshobo. It'll be fantastic. So next year, when the announcements go out, go on a mass, buy the forms. Mm. Who knows, you might get the opportunity to That's represent right. your home state. Thank you so much, Arthur. You do justice to that question and the whole conversation of Miss Universe Nigeria. If you're wondering what is going on, if you're thinking, uh, what's the update? What is she coming down to Nigeria? Well, if you can be present at the press conference tomorrow, which will be taking place at the Silverbird Galleria, um, you get all the answers to your questions. But thank you so much, Arthur. And, and if you just to chip in, will the press conference be open to all or is it strictly by the So you can, if, if you are unable to leave your important life yeah. right just go to the ig page the press conference will also be streamed live nice. so you get to see all this amazing content and ha and ask your questions online who knows we might pick your questions to answer all right thank you so much arthur we'll take a break and when we come back we have much just for you on the show Go ahead.